What's up, Trey here. Welcome to today's episode of Straight Up. Today, we are talking about five types of people that will ruin your life. I could talk about a hundred, a thousand types of people that will ruin your life. But today, we're going to focus on five. If you're new, thank you. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button, hit the like, comment. Let me know what you took from this. Let me know which one resonated with you most. But let's get right into this. Number one, all right, the user. This type of person is a person that only loves you just as much as they can use you. And to just be straight up with you, this person is not necessarily attracted to you. What I mean by that, they're not attracted to your heart. They're not attracted to who you are as a human being. This person is a person that is attracted to what I like to say surrounds your life. Okay, what surrounds your life. So maybe it's you're an athlete, maybe uh, you know it's your job, maybe the significance that you have, maybe you're popular, maybe whatever it is, they're surrounded, they're, they're attracted to that. They're attracted to the benefits that come with you. They're attracted to the things that make them look good by being around you. They're attracted to what they can take from your life. And so the question that you have to ask yourself is if all I had to offer was me, right? Friendship, whatever it may be, if all I had to offer was me, would this person still be in my life? And sometimes I'm not telling you to be cold hearted or overthink, but if you have a question about somebody in your life, you think they're a user because all they do is take, 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 take. All they do is never bring nothing to your life. They just take from your life. All they do is expect you to be there for them when they're never there for, me, for you, right? There's no reciprocation. And I always say, where there's no reciprocation, that relationship needs to be annihilated because what's gonna happen is you're gonna allow this person to drain you. You're gonna allow this person to just take from you. You're gonna allow this person to drain your energy, drain your peace. And you're gonna get to a point where you're starting to feel empty. And some of us watching this right now you're empty is because you have a lot of users in your life. So what I would suggest to you is this. If you know somebody's a user or you think they might be a user, pull the rug from out under them, as I like to say. And what I mean by that is cut off that life supply. If you know they're using you for X, Y, Z, then take away X, Y, Z. If you know they're only loyal to the benefits that come with you, then take away those benefits. And you're going to see what it really is. You're going to see if they really love you for you or they just love you from, for what they can take from you, okay? So number one is the user. Number two is the complainer. They will steal your peace by complaining about the same things that they aren't willing to change. Let me say this off top. I'm not telling you to no longer be a helper. I'm not telling you to no longer be there for people. But what I am telling you is to protect your peace. <laughs> what I am telling you is to stop allowing people to dump their problems on your life. I love to say this because y'all know this is true, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just be real with you. I love helping people with their problems until their problems become my problems. I love helping people through their problems and with their problems until their problem starts being a problem in my life. And a lot of times what happens is we allow complainers to keep bringing the same stuff over and over and over again. And what you do is you choose their problems over your peace. And sometimes it's necessary, right? When you have a good heart, you want to help people, you do that. But how many times are you going to choose their problems? The same things that you told them about. The same things that you helped them with, that you took time out your day to have an hour, two hour conversation, and they're keeping themselves in the same situation. They're keeping themselves in the same relationship. They're keeping themselves in the same friendship. They're keeping themselves in the same job, right? They're complaining to you about the job and they're doing nothing to position themselves to get out the job. So there comes a point in your life where you got to say, you know what? I'm no longer choosing their problems over my peace. I'm no longer choosing their pain over my peace. 
never feel guilty for that because what people will do once you start choosing your peace, once you hit them with the truth, like, listen, if you ain't going to listen to me, if you ain't going to take my advice, then stop bringing your problems to me. If you're not going to even consider what I'm telling you, why are you coming to me? Because I'm going to tell you something. Some people don't want to be helped, right? They just want to be pacified. They don't want the truth. They just want a beautiful lie to make them feel good about staying in a situation they're doing nothing about. And I want to tell you this. You cannot save people. And some people might disagree with me with, with, me, with this in the comments, but I got to be real with you. You can't save someone unless that person wants to be saved. It reminded me when I was drowning, like literally, I can laugh about it now, but I was drowning. I did a mud run. Some of you know the story, but I was drowning and I was fighting for my life because I wanted to be saved. There was a guy that jumped in the water and he actually helped me save myself. But if that guy would have jumped in the water and I continued to drown, I didn't want to be saved and I pushed him away. I didn't fight to save my life or stay afloat. I would have died. And some of you, you're that person. You're trying to save somebody and help somebody that clearly doesn't want to be helped. And it doesn't mean that you quit on them. Sometimes you got to plant seeds and leave. Sometimes you got to learn how to love people and help people from a distance. Because the more you try to pull someone up that wants to stay down, I can guarantee you this. They will bring you down faster than you can bring them up. Never feel guilty for choosing not to be somebody's uh, somebody's go-to for their situations that they're allowing themselves to keep themselves in. You don't have to be the go-to for someone else's pain. You don't have to be the go-to for someone else's problems, especially when they're choosing to keep themselves in it. So number two is the complainer. Number three is the blamer, right? They always try to make you feel guilty and they never accept responsibility. This is the type of person and these people, all these people will ruin your life, especially if you got multiple people. Some of you got multiple people in each category, but this is the type of person that is always pointing the finger. They live life like this. It's always your fault. It's always their fault. It's always everybody else's fault. But they never look within themselves and point the thumb and say, you know what? It's on me. You know what? I'm going to take responsibility over my life. They blame you for situations that they're choosing to keep themselves in. They blame you for their unhappiness when they're choosing to keep themselves in things that make them unhappy. They blame you for a toxic life when they're choosing to keep themselves around things that contribute to that toxic life. And what I see a lot of you do is you start to feel bad. You start to be like, man, maybe it is my fault. Maybe it is my fault because I didn't do more for them. Maybe it is my fault because, you know, I wasn't there the way that they thought I should be there. And I want to tell you this, and I want you to hear me clear. There is no perfection you can provide to someone that is committed to keeping themselves in an environment that has ruined their life. There is no perfection you can provide to someone that's committed to blaming you for everything. No matter what perfection you give, you can do everything right. Everything right. But this is the type of person or people that will always find the wrong even in the right that you do. And the more you keep these blamers around your life, the more they're gonna drain your energy, drain your peace, and drain your sanity. Number three is the blamer. Number four is the competitor, all right? This is the type of person, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is the type of person that wants you to do good, you know, for the most part, as long as you don't do better than them. I believe in healthy competition, but what I don't believe in is friends competing with friends. What I don't believe in is that somebody's in your circle, in your life, always trying to outdo you, right? And you know it's this type of person, anytime you talk about something good happening in your life, they got to one-up you. You know what that means? Is that they got to talk about something good that's happened in their life. They always, I call it selfish communication. 
Somebody that's a competitor in your life, because I'm going to be real with you. Some of you are in competition with people and you don't even know it. But you wonder why you get around them and the energy feel a little different. You wonder why they don't cheer for you and clap for you when you win as much as they used to. You wonder why they don't like your posts. You wonder why they don't show up for you. You wonder why they don't support you. Because in their mind, you're winning. You winning in your life equals they're losing. In their mind, you doing better means that they doing worse. And you ain't even been thinking about this. This ain't even on your radar. But you wonder why, like, man, their energy seem off. Man, when I bring something that's good happening to my life, they don't really act like they care. Man, they always trying to belittle me. A competitor will always try to belittle you. Always put the word little around things that you're doing. Because they want to make you feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're not elevating your life. You're not making the world respect your greatness. Because they want to tear you down to build themselves up. These are people in your life, man, that you cannot have around you because they're filled with jealousy. They're filled with envy. And the more that you climb, these are the people that usually find conflict, right? The more that you climb. These are the people that you usually have conflict with because as you continue to win, for one, they might feel responsible for that. But for two, they can't be happy for you because they're not in a happy place in your life. So some of you like literally have people in your life that aren't wishing the best for you. Some people in your life, and as bad as this sounds, some people in your life aren't praying for you to make it. Some people in your life aren't praying for you to be the best version of yourself. Some people in your life aren't praying for you to succeed. And oftentimes, and sometimes, it's the person that's next to you. And I don't want you to overthink people in your life, but trust the vibes that they give you. Listen to their words that they're saying. I talked about selfish communication. Selfish communication is when someone, and let me know in the comments if you know somebody like this, selfish communication is when someone is always making the conversation about them, right? They always make the conversation about them. I'm going to be real with you. Sometimes what I do is I make up something that I know they know nothing about just to see if they're going to act like they know something about it. You talk about, you know, oh, I'm doing this. They got to say, oh, I'm doing this too. They always make the conversation about them. So when people use selfish communication, oftentimes those are people that will probably be competitors in your life. All right. Not the healthy competition, not the competition that pushes you to be better, but the competition that's actually hoping that you don't succeed as much as you can. Number four is the competitor. Last but not least, number five, the abuser, okay? If you keep people in your life that are committed to abusing you, and I'm not talking about physical abuse, right? That's part of it too, for sure. But I'm talking about that emotional abuse because this is an abuse that we don't really see often. Well, we don't really, it's not as, in the forefront, like when somebody physically abuses us, we know that person doesn't care about us. But there's people in our life that will subliminally, emotionally abuse us. And some of us, what we do is we keep giving people chances. I'm a firm believer in chances, y'all. I do. I believe in that. But there comes a point when you got to put your foot down because the more chances you give, the less respect people will start to have for you. Because they know, oh, no matter what, I'm going to have another chance. No matter what, I have another chance to abuse them. Right? The abuser person that abuses your forgiveness, that abuses your trust, that abuses your loyalty. Right? So they know that I can always pull this person back because they know exactly what to do to pull you back. They know exactly how to secure your insecurities. They know exactly how to fill the voids in your life. They know exactly what to say, how to apologize, the words to use to make you think that they change. You got to stop giving people opportunity to abuse your loyalty, right? Don't allow your loyalty to keep you in a situation that is ruining your life. Don't allow your loyalty to become your slavery. Loyalty isn't staying in a situation and giving people chance after chance after chance. That's stupidity, to be honest with you. You got to be loyal to yourself first, and that's not a selfish thing. You got to be loyal to your principles first because the people that respect your principles will appreciate your loyalty. Some of you are allowing people to abuse your forgiveness. We're staying in situations where words are making us think that they change. 
instead of action. I am deaf to what you say until your actions give me a reason to listen. You got to stop allowing words to pull you back. You got to stop allowing promises to pull you back. You got to accept change behavior. And I'm not just talking about change behavior for the moment because anybody changed for you for the moment, anybody changed for you for a week or for a month to show you that they quote unquote change. I'm talking about consistent change. And I'll tell you this, you know, you know, somebody has changed when their change has nothing to do with you. So if you know somebody has issues that are bigger than you and they work on those issues, then you know that person's really committed to changing. But if they just change the things that they did to you, then that's typical, right? Most people will do that so they can gain your trust back. But if you keep abusers in your life, you will ruin your life. So I want to tell you, man, this is not a session to make you overthink things. But if you have questions over and over and over about certain people in your life, then you probably got your answer. I don't want you overanalyzing people that have been good to you. I don't want you overanalyzing things that don't need to be overanalyzed. But if you've been around a user, if you've been around a complainer, if you got these people in your life, you got a blamer, you got a person that's always competing with you, you got a person that's been abusing you over and over and over again, you got to make a choice. You got to take ownership over your life and say, you know what? I'm going to remove these types of people from my life. Because if you don't, you will ruin your life. You see, our lives aren't necessarily ruined by the things inside of us all the time. But they're ruined by the things we allow in and by the things that we choose to keep in our lives. So you got to make a decision. Because I promise you, if you get rid of these types of people that are consistently giving you that, and some of you got one person that's giving you all five of these things, you got to make a choice to change your life and make a decision. Because if you don't, life will decide for you. But like I always tell you, it all starts with you. It's rehab time.